Let's see how to configure NetFlow on our router. In this case, I've got a router acting as our PC, and it's going to be sending traffic out to another router that we're pretending is out on the internet, and we're going to send a few different traffic flows, and we want to be able to see those flows on router R2. It's on router R2 where we're going to configure NetFlow. Let's do that first. We go into Interface Configuration Mode for the interfaces we want to be monitoring the flows. I'm going to go into Interface Fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, and I'm going to say IP Flow ingress. We get to specify direction. Now what I could do here, I could say IP flow egress and that way I would get flows going in either direction. Another approach to this is I could go to that other interface. I could go to interface serial 1 slash 0 and I could say IP flow ingress there. You can be creative about how you want to monitor traffic. Just realize that it is unidirectional monitoring so if you want to monitor incoming and outgoing traffic on an interface you need to say IP flow ingress and IP flow here's the context sensitive help you need to say IP flow egress on the same interface. In my case though just to show you that we can do it this way I want to go into interface serial 1 slash 0 and let's say IP flow ingress again. So we've got traffic coming in from the WAN, we've got traffic coming in from the LAN, that should do it. And just by doing this, the router is now running NetFlow. It's able to observe flows. Let's prove that. Let's go over to the router acting as our PC and let's set up a few different flows out to that internet router. I'm going to first ping the router. We'll be using ICMP. I'll say ping 3.3.3.3. That's the loopback IP address of that router, by the way. And it's successful. Let's do a telnet, and I don't have a password set, so I think it's going to be rejected. But let's try to telnet to 3.3.3.3, and it rejects me because a password is not set. No worries. I've also got that internet router acting as an HTTP server, so I can say telnet, only telnet using port 80, and it opens a connection. I'm going to get out of that connection. To do that, I do a control shift 6, and then I press the X key to get out of that. Then I can say disconnect to close that session. But I've set up a few flows now. If I go to router R2, I can see those flows in the cache of the router by saying show IP cache flow. And we get to see information about the flows it observed. Here's what we set up. We set up some ping traffic. We set up some World Wide Web or HTTP traffic. And also Telnet traffic. Now, don't be thrown by the fact it says total flows 4. Because before I shot this video, I had already gone through this process. And I already had some flows that the router is still remembering right now. But it tells us the number of flows. And it's two flows per connection. I've set up two Telnet sessions, one in the video and one prior to the video, and each of those two sessions had two flows, giving us a total of four flows. We can see the number of packets that have been sent per flow and how many seconds each of those flows have been active. This is just raw data we're looking at right here. For the real world, it might be much more meaningful for me to export my NetFlow information from this router and from other devices in my network to a common NetFlow collector. That would give us one of those fancy graphics like we saw in the previous video that showed us the individual flows in the network. Let me show you how to set that up. To point to an external NetFlow collector, we can do this. Let's go into global configuration mode, and we say IP flow export, and we say what interface is going to be responsible for exporting our NetFlow information. And it's common to use the loopback interface. You don't have to, but I typically do. I'll say the source is interface loopback 0, and we need to say what version of NetFlow we're using. And this is going to be dependent on the documentation of whatever NetFlow collector you're using. It should tell you what version to specify. Let's say, as an example, that I'm running version 5. I'll say ipflow-export version 5. And now I need to point to the IP address of the NetFlow collector and specify the port to which I'm going to be sending. I'm going to say IP flow export destination and let's say I'm sending it to 192.168.1.50 and NetFlow technically does not have a standard port that you have to always use so this is one of those things where you should check the documentation of your NetFlow collector but what I have found it's oftentimes 9996 it might not always be that there is no standard but it's commonly in my experience anyway it's commonly 9996 as the port number let's go ahead and press enter 
and we're done. And of course, in the real world, if you did have one of those external NetFlow collectors, you would go through the documentation that came with that software to set up the server side of this process.